everybody this is Masaki from State 43 and today we're gonna have a very special video so uh, I am currently the 30th governor of my state 43 so that means I can finally make a video about being a governor what does it mean uh, how do you kind of balance all the buffs and the, those kind of pieces so let's all enjoy this video uh, yeah okay um, so the first thing we want to talk about is just what is it how do you actually become the governor of a state um, Basically, from either SVS or uh, Capital Clash CC, um, after you, the victory, your leader of the alliance that won will be able to nominate a new governor. And only the R5. So that doesn't mean if you're R4 or whatever, you want to make sure the R5 has it, which also means that um, you want to make sure the R5 is online after the victory because you can't elect it before the victory is declared. So make sure the R5 is online, and if the R5 can't be online, make sure to nominate somebody else to be R5 to be able to name the new governor. Because if you don't do that, the whoever's R5 of an alliance will automatically become, uh, of the alliance that wins um, the capital, will automatically become the governor. So uh, just make sure they're online. <clears throat> okay, if you are, so this only applies really for CC and SVS when you're defending. Um, for SVS where you're attacking, your state's just going to keep the governorship for another round. So that's just doesn't apl apply for you if you're invading other people for SVS. Okay. And if you lose your SVS invasion, meaning somebody invades your state, but you fail to defend, then you actually don't get to be governor. So there is no governor uh, for your state for that round. So basically their state gets like kind of like a little bit more of the buffs. It's not quite double. It's like a 150% boost. Um, but that's it. Yeah. Um, there is also a time limit to make that decision for election of the governor. So make sure again, the R5 is online. I would just do it as soon as possible because the, the buffs also start as soon as you elect the governor, um, and the governor can start doing things. Right. So here we go. All right. Here's the hall of fame of whoever has been governor before. Okay, let's talk about the basics. So <clears throat> as soon as you become governor, there's a couple things you're going to see, right? So you're going to get this nice little menu uh, that's on the right bottom right corner. You can also access the same menu here. But basically, the governor menu has a couple options. So let's talk about the packs first. So you're going to be awarded the support, the defender, and the hero packs. Um, for Capital Clash, you're going to have 15, 5, and 1 of these packs. And if you win SVS Invasion... Um, then you're just going to have double these packs. So like 30, 10, and 2. Um, what they are is that these are just basically packs that give you bio caps, um, you know, different pieces. The most important things that you get out of here are going to be uh, these speed ups, um, the bio caps, and also the... Um, uh, that's actually about it. Yeah, so just the bio caps and the speed ups. Uh, the rest of the stuff is like very minimal, so it's not a big deal. Uh, mo most of this is just honestly just for... Um, kind of like honoring people that helped you. So what I would recommend is um, just for these ones, send the packs out to the people who helped you. So if, especially for states where, you know, you might be doing uh, CC with other alliances that kind of like merged with you to help you win, you might want to give some of the packs to the that alliance's team members that really helped you win, um, win the SVS or CC. Uh, again, just usually, you know, giving them out to your alliance is also not bad. Um, this again, because it's not really that much of a reward, uh, like 500 bio, even 5,000 bio caps, honestly, is not that huge. Um, this is more or less of an honorary or like kind of like a way to thank people. So to think about it that way, what I recommend is actually sending these out to your newer players or lower level players, as um, these packs are going to be a lot more useful for them than for your top tier players who probably don't even need the bio caps. All right. Uh, let's talk about the more exciting stuff for the governor. So there's going to be your honors. Um, so the honors and, of course, the markings are both part of the governorship system. Basically, how that works is that the honors are like buffs, but they're individual buffs for the players, and the markings are debuffs for individual players. Okay. Um, in general, most states, I think, like, you're probably not going to be using the markings much, but you're going to definitely want to make sure honors are always on uh, folks. So let's go through all the honors and what they are and what they do. So you have the chief strategist. Basically, it gives a straight buff for construction speed, research speed, and training speed. It's probably one of the better buffs uh, that you have. One of the top two, I would say, for sure. 
Um, yeah, so this is very useful for people who are chasing uh, SOTF wins. If they're trying to start some sort of con large construction, make sure that you know you time it with them so they can um, stack this with like other buffs that they have. Also, you know, rapid development um, uh, talents so they can really get a nice reduction to their uh, building speed or research speed. The Mighty Ox is a very useless buff. Basically, it gives you um, you know basic resource production. But from one, one perspective you can think about it is it's really nice just to have an honor because these things all have a little marking over the bases that they represent. The Master Medic is um, basically a buff that gives healing speed and hospital capacity. The hospital capacity part usually doesn't matter too much. And this is a very important buff right after SVS um, because in general this one can be used to help players heal up afterwards. A lot of players are gonna have uh, very full hospitals, so passing this um, Master Medic around will be helpful. The War Wolf is a buff that gives troop lethality. The Iron Fist is troop attack and march capacity, which is kind of nice because it you know makes you basically have a little bit more attack power in general. And the Patriot is another top buff. Basically, this one gives a ridiculous 50% training speed buff as well as a 200 training capacity buff. So this is a great one for anybody who's trying to like get more troops done on the training days. So Patriot is definitely usually a top requested honor for, in our state at least. All right, on to the marking side. Majority of the markings, I'm not going to go over them, but basically they are like the opposite version of uh, the buffs that you can get. Some of them usually don't debuff as much like you see the donkey only just does half of it but the sloth is a uh, basically it's like a negative version of the strategist um, yeah so these are mostly in our state it's used for as jokes or just as fun uh, but again it puts a marking over somebody's head so it's kind of cool so let me show you what that looks like as the governor you're going to have this little marking that denotes that you're the governor but for your debuffs they look like this and for buffs they look like so and it's just kind of cool to have this. So just something that you can think about uh, granting people, okay? Um, some tips for honors and markings is to make sure like, <clears throat> you know, people in the state can, uh, make sure that people in the state request honors from you. So make sure you announce that after you win, make sure you give people head, heads up notice how to make requests, how to get those things lined up for them. Um, make sure you reward people that helped you during CC with honors. This is just nice because it just shows your gratitude better. Uh, so they're more likely to help you next time to win again. Um, yeah, share the honors around and help those in your state. This is actually pretty important uh, for our state. I, I believe this is one of the things, you know, uh, that continues to build into our unity as a state to make sure that, you know, we have a state that kind of works together um, because we don't, we don't just give the, the buffs only to our own alliance. We do share that around the state. And it helps a lot from when we go into SVS to have a unified front. Um, and, you know, the, the strategist and patriot is going to be very uh, highly demanded. So make sure you balance that out evenly for people. Um, the honors and the markings, they do have a 24-hour cooldown. So once you grant somebody, once you take the, uh, once you grant an honor, you're able to remove that honor uh, after a 24-hour. Sorry, that only exists for the honors, not for the markings. The markings you can remove right away. Okay, so let's talk about your other things you can do here. Um, okay. So let's talk about your actions. So actions are the things you see in this window and also state buffs, right? So um, let's talk about state buffs first. So state buffs are these items you see on the bottom. Training buff, the troop uh, healing buff, the research buff, the building buff. These kind of buffs basically just grant like a 10% increase or a 50% increase to your... Um, uh, you know, training, sorry, healing speed, 30% to training speed, etc. How you should use these buffs is that um, you should be using them because you want to target for um, the second week. So, so this is really important. Um, most of these things on the surface just look like they're a buff. The problem is that these things do have a seven day cooldown. So you can't just be deploying these uh, willy-nilly so i wouldn't recommend as soon as get becoming governor deploy all the buffs right away i would recommend kind of holding them off and think about the schedule a little bit what does that mean so if this is your first cc or svs um you probably don't know what's going to happen in two weeks right so what what happens two weeks after cc is going to be state versus state so in that week um there will be a thing called prep stage it's going to feel very similar to a sotf 
um, except it's going to be from you against the state you're going to be fighting. And you do want to win that because that guarantees that you're not going to uh, lose governor in your state and you have the chance to kind of like double buff your state, right? So having a buff schedule is important because these things have a seven-day cooldown. So while this first week of your governorship, it might not matter, but for week two, it will matter because you want to make sure you're staying on schedule to either SOTF or the prep stage. Um, yeah, so kind of how that works is, as an example, let's say on the Monday after you win um, S, uh, CC, you, um, you buff like Research Accelerator. The first time you can deploy that again is going to be um, in three um, in in a week. So just think about it from that perspective. You definitely don't want to be pumping that too early because maybe in a week, the first day, for example, the event is going to be uh, use, for example, biocaps or something like that or use uh, research speed up. And you want to combo that with this buff so that you have more of people in your state using those buffs and speed ups, uh, using those speed ups during the buff time. And thus scoring more points and making sure your state wins your prep stage. Okay, yeah. So to ensure that you have the buffs ready on the state uh, on the days that matter, you do have to look ahead a little bit. And uh, there's going to be a lot of guides online about the the different schedules for SOTF. Um, just kind of follow those guides, and that should help you a lot. Uh, that way, you'll know which schedule. But in general, it's going to be either building a research on like day one, so that's the Monday. And then on day three is going to be the training day. And day five is going to be like the whichever building or research you didn't deploy will be on day five. Um, the other thing is <clears throat> you want to make sure that you are uh, handing out honors like the lethality honors. So that's a little bit different from the, the buffs here before reservoir raid. Um, so that's going to be helpful for that. And of course, you want to be deploying the healing buffs right after uh right after cc so the healing buffs the first thing you do right after you win so that you can help the state uh, heal up and also you want to drop this again right before the next cc or svs um, because they will even though the governorship will kind of like fade away the moment your capital clash or svs starts your uh, training your your healing buff will maintain so that will stay cool so those are the different state buffs you can do uh, this part might be a little confusing, but once you go through about two rounds of um, this, I think you'll understand what I'm talking about when I say space out the buffs, have a schedule, uh, and make sure you line up the buffs uh, for week two with the SOTF or prep stage of that week. All right, so as far as the actions, you have um, black market contracts, which basically gives you 250 bio caps, and you can do this three times a day, so you should definitely do this. Make sure you're doing that three times a day. Um, the eviction allows you to basically take any base um, from a coordinate and just put it into somewhere else. It, it says like target will, will be randomly relocated elsewhere in the state. What this actually does is it kind of, um, it does something like, you know, what happens when a base gets burned out. So basically when you evict somebody, until that person logs back in, they won't actually be on the map. So they won't be available, period. So they're kind of like in this weird null space. So be aware of that when you do eviction for people. Um, the shackles is going to be used for to prevent somebody from attacking someone else. So something you can do. And Rapid Finder, if you ever need to locate somebody, you can use Rapid Finder. Uh, one tip with the Rapid Finder is that if you have a name that you, for example, like really can't spell, like this Pablo here, like that's not, you know, characters you can spell. You can actually just click on their chief name and that will copy it into your clipboard. And from there, you can click the Rapid Finder and then just paste it directly into that clipboard like this. And if you do a deploy, you'll be able to find that person, even if they have a weird, uh, weirdly spelled name or something that's not like Unicode characters. They're not, you know, English or something. You can still find them this way, even if you don't know how to type it. Okay. Um, yeah. So make sure you're hitting black market every day. Make sure you can, you know, so uh, if you're going to evict somebody, um, make sure, and maybe this is like abandoned base or something like that, somebody quit the game, make sure you attack them before you do the eviction. Um, basically, because the abandoned base, after you evict, you won't be able to find them and attack them. So that's not going to work. So if you're going to evict somebody for like, you know, being basically gone from the game, I highly recommend you 
um, make sure you basically attack them first uh, and then evict afterwards, okay? So as an example, I'll do eviction on this guy. So um, let's see, go to the governor office. No, I don't wanna do honors. Ah, okay, so I think I just go like this then. Eviction, yep, here, deploy, confirm, and he's gone. So it's just gone from the map. So it's kind of cool to be able to do things like this as the governor, okay? All right, so some general advices. So first is make sure you communicate with your state for your intended buff schedule. Um, if you have a state discord, I would highly recommend posting it there. Uh, if not, then maybe um, have a place uh, where you can post this information, just have people who can reference it. Um, make sure you keep up to the schedule. Don't fall behind because that seven day cooldown. So highly recommend that you set an alarm if you need to. Um, Encourage people to message you about the honor requests and any issues where they need you to evict or shackle somebody. Just make sure people are messaging you because, you know, it's hard sometimes to keep up with the state chat and especially when you're not like online all the time. Um, make sure if somebody asks for future requests, make sure to note them down and then keep on the schedule. That way you don't double promise buffs to people for the same day. Um, there is a trick where you can kind of, for example, let's say there's troop training day and you want to be able to give the Patriot to two different players. You can actually do that. The trick is going to be, uh, let's say the troop training day is on Wednesday, so day three. Um, you can actually give somebody, for example, the Patriot starting at 12 UTC on the Tuesday and then shift over to the second person on Wednesday at 12 UTC. This way, the first person will have 12 hours to do their troop training at the beginning, and the second person will have 12 hours to do their troop training towards the end of the day. That way, both people can use the Patriot buff for their troop training day, as an example. You can, of course, do this with the strategist, with any of the other buffs for any of the days that other people request. Um, and then lastly, whenever you activate a buff, just make sure you broadcast it. Um, use the microphone. It's what it costs you like a couple like uh bio caps again which you can get from the black market contracts so you know you're good to go anyways right so all right that's pretty much it oh yeah uh the fun stuff right um don't worry about governor credits you know pretty much all the actions of the players like gathering will grant you governor credits um so you're gonna have enough for forever you won't you won't have to really worry about that um, but do make sure you're changing like your state name, your state flag. Again, these things have a 24 hour cooldown. So make sure after you change it that you're, uh, you're happy with it. And of course your state board, this is something that other people from other states can read. Uh, it looks kind of like this. So as an example, this is what our state looks like. But if I look at the state next to us, uh, we can read their state, um, board. Um, basically, you can also read their state board and see what they're all about, etc. So that's something that you can uh, look at. But that's it. Um, yeah, um, being governor is pretty fun. It's kind of interesting, obviously. Um, it's going to be <laughs> just, you know, it's maybe a little bit more busy because you're going to be uh, helping people. But hopefully that's something that you're interested in. It does also grant you a little bit like kind of interesting special powers. So uh, I, I enjoy it, so it's kind of fun. So yeah, uh, I hope this make, makes some sense to you and uh, I wish you good luck with your uh, journey to become the governor. And um, yeah, uh, this is Masaki from State 483. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I want you to stay classy. Even if I lost the